When I was a little boy, about seven or eight years old, so we're looking now in the sort of 78, 79 era. Remember those days? <laughs> when I was a little boy, my dad introduced me to the very peculiar ways of river fishing. Anybody here river fished? Anyone here sea fished? Yeah, more people sea fished. Thank God for that. So he introduced me to these strange ways of river fishing. And uh, as my dad had grown up in Yorkshire and he fished from the River Ouse, um, he told me about his fishing prowess as he was teaching me. And I never, ever witnessed him catching a fish, ever, not once, <laughs> not once. Although I, I had no choice to believe him when he described the, the massive beasts that he claimed to have landed. Anyway, he introduced me to the fine arts of river fishing, the river rods, the, the very fine lines, the hooks, the baits. It's all a bit, with river fishing, it's all a bit mincy and fiddly. I don't know how, to this day, my dad's sausage fingers were able to tie such delicate knots. It was a mystery to me. But he always emphasized the importance of the right line, the right rod, the right reel, the right type of bait. And he always took a comfy chair or two for me as well, and, uh, and a flask of tea. I'm sure there was a flask of something else as well, but I couldn't prove it. But it was particularly memorable when, as a little boy or a little girl, you get to put the bait on the hook, the maggots, or in sea fishing terms, the ragworm. And do you know how to put a ragworm on a hook, anyone? Anyone seen a ragworm? They look like really long, creepy millipedes. And if you poke the top of them, they've got these little claws that come out, like this. And you have to tap the top so that the claws come out. And when the claw comes out, then you put the hook in. And as the claws go back in, they take the hook with them. Fish eat that. And we eat fish. It's disgusting, isn't it? Anyway, where was I? Um, yeah, right. So, over the years we went fishing, right, and um, I heard the stories of old, the size of the carp that my dad would catch, the fighting strength of the pike. I was amazed. Dad, when are we going to catch a fish? It's been ages. He said, soon, son, soon. <laughs> Patience is what you need. Now, pass me, pass me the flask of tea, would you? Oh, right, Dad, all right, I'll do that, I'll do that. So, the years rolled by, 1978, 79, 80. 81, <laughs> 82, Dad, are we going to catch a fish soon? Soon, son, soon. It was in 1982 that I had my epiphany that I would become a sea fisherman. So I got all the gear, I saved up from my paper round money, bought the mackerel feathers, loaded the rod and line with strong line, a bigger rod, a bigger reel, and I cast into the sea and caught four mackerel on my first go. Now I was hooked. Get it? Come on, come on. So I became a sea fisherman. I've never fished in a river since. So now my dad, for, as far as I'm concerned, will have to get the flask and the paper himself now. He could well have said to me, actually, at one point, follow me, son, and I will make you become a sea fisherman <laughs> through my own inability to catch a fish. And just a few years later, while I was sea fishing with a friend of mine, we were walking from Portland on Chesil Beach, walking up the beach. We'd gone about two miles. And if you know Chesil Beach, it's shingle, so it's quite a way to walk. We had our rods, we'd caught a couple of mackerel already, and we sat down to take a breather with all our gear, and literally, right as I'm sat here on the beach, right in front of me, a massive shoal of sprats washed up onto the beach. Like, massive. It was like, it was like a scene out of a film. It was incredible. And we worked out that a massive shoal of mackerel had been chasing them and had pushed them onto the beach. It was amazing. So we raced down there with our fishing rods and our feathered line. I had about six feathered hooks and so did my mate. And we loaded these live sprats on to our hooks and cast into the sea. We caught over 250 mackerel that day. It was brilliant. One of the most exhilarating, well, it was the most exhilarating fishing day I've had. In fact, if anyone's interested, I think... I think my mum might still have some in her freezer, if anyone is. <laughs> She's a very proud mother. <laughs> so becoming. 